Hey guys, I'm over here, off camera. Um, I've been asked a few times to show how I'm doing my abstract watercolor painting. I do do other things besides sewing. I know I've been doing a lot of sewing lately. Um, and I wanted to start off here because I wanted to show you my painting nook. Now, behind the camera is a large acrylic painting easel. And I do have acrylic painting supplies in this same little alcove, but I have set up a desk here in front of the window, and this is actually two old school 1980s era uh, wooden TV trays, and um, they side by side fit under the window perfectly. I have a nice view of the woods next to my house, and that jingling you just heard is the children next door playing out my driveway, but that's fine. Um, I do use an easel to do these paintings on. Now, I will admit that when I first started painting, I didn't use an easel. Um, I didn't understand why you needed an easel. I didn't, this is a watercolor block. I'm on the very last page, but I didn't work on watercolor blocks. Didn't understand like, what the attraction to that was or anything. For this process, because you really want it to be abstract and you want things to run and flow, yes, you could do it on a flat surface and just pick it up and tilt it. Um, I find it easier to work on the easel and um, having it on a block, the paper on a block, no matter what kind of paper you use, um, keeps the edges from warping and curling while you're working on it. We are working with um, water-based mediums, primarily watercolor, but also some gouache and a lot of water and so you really want to have a block or you want to have your paper stretched to a board and then have on the easel. I think that's the best way. This happens to be um, fluid watercolor paper but I'm not a picky paper person. Um, I will use cotton paper which this is. I will use cellulose paper plenty of times too. I'm not super picky. Um, I like Arches paper, but it's just really expensive. So I tend not to buy it unless there's something on sale somewhere. Um, so fluid tends to be more affordable, but buy whatever works for you or use what you have. Even better, use what you have. Okay, so we're gonna switch views here a little bit and I'll show you some more of what's on the table. Yes, my tripod is here because this is where I do a lot of filming. So the tripod's right in the corner. Uh, and going forward, I can easily clean this table off and do a little bit of art journaling again here right in front of the window. I've got my plants and things in the window, some tools, some things that make me smile and make me happy. So that's one way to get started. Find a nice corner for yourself with good lighting and turn on some music and we're going to just paint how we feel. All right, let me switch camera angles. Okay, so... First thing you're gonna need is paint. <laughs> now these are not traditional paint palettes. Um, these are actually pill boxes. And they come with a removable plastic cover, which is great because if you have these and you wanna take them with you somewhere, you can just put the little covers back in and close it up. And they're nice and small and they fit really well in my travel easel, which is much bigger than this one. Um, the reason I like these besides that is that they have really big open spaces. So when you're doing this abstract water, watercolor painting, we're not really using traditional painting tools too much. You're using things like broken um, gift cards or spoons or sponges or face rollers or, I mean, I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I do use. So you want a really big well to dip them into. It's also, for me, not about um, keeping the colors pure and pristine. As you can see, especially from the yellows, they've been a little bit contaminated, but you know what, I'm okay with that. So have something to put your paints in that has big spaces, larger than a traditional large half pan space. It took me a little while to find something that would work that also I could fold up and take with me if I wanted to do this on the go somewhere. Um, I will link the um, Amazon listing for this down below. 
I also have a little mini pitcher full of water to re-wet these with. This is the easiest way I've found. I do have a bottle with a needle, a tiny tip, and a spray bottle. This isn't to wet the paint, this is to put on the paper to give yourself drips and texture and whatnot. Um, same thing for the pipettes. That's, it's for texture and marks on the paint. It's not for what you think it is. All right, some of the more unusual tools, um, and this is one I saw somebody use on Instagram, I think, and they actually took a sponge, poked a hole in it, um, and pushed a bunch of rolled up saran wrap through the hole, wrapped it around it, zip tied it at the top, after they squeezed it tight and got these, I mean, it leaves a really pretty suggestive flower type mark on the paper. I, it's really, really cool. As you can see, they are dirty, so I have used them. I also have some traditional artist sponges, some sea sponges. This is a hair scrunchie. I don't use it for my hair. I use it to, you know? All right. Uh, spoons, brushes, this is one that I made out of the, something that had that on it. Um, got any idea what that is? That's a test. <laughs> it's the inside of a pizza, uh, roll of scotch tape. <laughs> um, gift card. Eyeshadow brush, plush brush, hair pick thing, uh, another tape sticker, oops, center thing. What else is in here? Another hair pick. Um, a broken eyebrow slash eyelash brush. This part's all broken off, but that's okay. I use this part to make marks on the paint. Um, I have a bunch of brushes here, but they are not paint brushes. So these are old makeup brushes. So fun fact, I don't really wear that much makeup anymore, but I took all the brushes. I took a couple out that I do still use. The rest of them came up here. They work great. Um, I have a toothbrush. I have a couple of different like face cleaner, scrubber, massaging brush things. I have a couple of homemade brushes. These are pieces of driftwood with feathers glued to a piece of ribbon and then wrapped around the edge to make these. They live, leave good marks. And this is another facial massager thing with a bobble inside of it. And this is one with a roller. And then this looks like that. These are mostly, these are from the Dollar Tree. I've got some popsicle sticks, palette knives, and some plastic wrap. So let's put all these down here. They live in a, a little tray here in the windowsill, which makes it easy for me to get to them. First thing we need to do is wet our paints and while I'm putting water in all of them. So this is about painting how you feel, not painting what you see. Painting how you feel about what you see, painting how you feel about yourself, some part of your life, whatever it is. I tend to be nature and landscape oriented, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna do that, these kind of paintings, and that's where your inspiration is coming from. Everybody's different, so there's no wrong way you know, if you're feeling angry about something and you want to do an abstract painting, um, you're probably going to end up with lots of reds in there, but mostly we'll talk about landscapes because that's where I come from. I tend to, most of the time, do something that's fairly abstract for the background and then do one thing that's very suggestive of a plant or a tree or something like that, and then I leave it at that. So we're going to let these sit for a minute. I'm going to slightly change the camera angle so you can maybe see that. And we'll be right back. Okay. 
So besides all the paint marking tools, I also have a cup full of like water brushes filled with ink, um, another sprayer, a, ball, a big ballpoint pen, some pencils and that sort of thing, and um, graphite crayons. So sometimes I get started with something like that. Um, these are, I call them abstract watercolors, but sometimes they are technically mixed media because I do use other things and I don't limit myself. I'm more about, about creating a interesting finished piece of art that expresses what I'm seeing, looking at, feeling than I am being a purist about only watercolor. So do what makes you happy. Um, but that's how I get started. Okay, so I think right now, I think I'm going to start with the crayon. I have a tendency to do this. Start with a line. Just making marks. I'm not thinking, I'm just doing. I don't remember what color this is, but that's okay. If it'll come out. I'm guessing it's some shade of blue. There we go. Blue tends to come out in all of my works in one way or the other. I don't understand why that is, but it just is. I'm going to grab my gift card and we are going to reach into one of the blues in my palette. So I do have my paint palettes divided into blue, purple, earthy terracottas, and yellow, green, red. That's what works for me, so um, let's try this one. Oh yeah, that's good. I like that. So I'm just, I usually do start with some kind of horizon line. That doesn't mean it stays that way, but I do usually start that way. And I'm just making marks. In the back of my mind, I have some of the hikes we've gone on or drives my husband and I have gone on. We have a nature preserve not too far from the house that has a big pond with wildlife. And I'm just going to grab colors. Obviously I'm sticking with the blues and purples for the moment. I like where that's at, so we're going to leave that. Um, let's grab one of our brushes and some green. I have a light green and a dark green, so let's go with the lighter one for the moment. I don't know why I'm putting that there, but okay. That looks like foliage to me. It is giving it some interest. So you've got the horizontal lines, then you've got these vertical and diagonal marks from this. So the other thing when you're doing this is you wanna keep your marks varied and interesting. Um, and that gives it visually something else for the viewer to look at. Um, Want to go with a spoon? Oh no, let's do this thing. Another shade of green. I'm okay with the drips and the extra water. Just gives it more marks, which we're okay with. Grab a little bit of gray. Why? I don't know. Adding some gray, keeping my color, trying to keep my colors and marks balanced. That's what works for me. If I make a mark I don't like, or there's too much of it, magic, or the edges aren't blended enough or something, works great. Okay, 
Um, let's grab our roller roller ball and let's put it in this sandy earthy color. And just make some marks. Um, let's see. Sometimes the hardest thing is picking a tool because you don't know what to pick. This is a like peachy terracotta color. And I'm going to grab one of these. In a dark color. Okay. Um, I want to grab. I'm going to grab this makeup brush, this is a make angled brush. It's a Lauren Hutton makeup brush. I don't, she's not even, not only I don't think still alive, well maybe she is, but her makeup company's not in business anymore, so. It's an old brush. What color do I want to use? That would be the question. Choices, choices, choices. Sometimes that's the hardest thing. Let's go with, yeah, let's go with that color. Then I want to take my feather brush again, dry it off just a little bit, put it in that light green. And you just have to know when it's time to stop. If you keep going it, you're just gonna muddy it up. By the same token, I always seem to want to add a little bit of white somewhere. So I do have white down here. And because everything's wet, I'm not drying in anything, it's gonna blend. That's okay. Some paint of these paints will be bright and transparent or granulating. Some will be chalky because this palette is a mixture of watercolors and gouache. Um, let's do Okay, we're going to put some yellow, bright yellow. Yellow will add a nice pop of suggested sunlight, which honestly, this is kind of needing a little bit. You will find as you're collecting tools to make marks with that some will work better for you than others. Um, as you saw, mine are a combination of stuff from the trash, reused items, and things from the dollar store. None of it costs a lot of money. 
So that's how I create those. I'm gonna call that done. It's as simple as that. You let it dry and you go back and maybe you wanna add more layers, maybe you don't. For me, that works. I unintentionally drew something suggested by the pond and reserve that's like a mile from my house. That's it. This is what happens. I paint water. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what that means. If you know, leave it down below. I'd love to see what you guys do with abstract watercolor videos. And if you want to see me do another one of these, please let me know. Leave it down in the comments. Um, I'd love to see if you give this a try, what you're doing. Um, you can tag me in a post on um, social media. You can um, um, do a video and um, share the link with me. Um, if you want ready access to what I'm doing on the daily and um, how I'm doing it and my inspiration for things, you can become a patron. I have a Patreon and I post over there sort of regularly. They also have their own private YouTube channel with literally thousands of videos on it and um, a private Facebook chat with me, just us, me, us and that and me us and me, them and me. So um, yeah, think about supporting the free content here by doing that. Um, and that's it for today. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Paint something abstracted. And I'd love to see where you go with that. Bye guys.